As you stand, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. In 1994, Douglas Copeland wrote a book called Life After God. It became a bestseller and it established Copeland as uh, a popular Canadian author. Now he lives in Vancouver. Uh, Life with God is a collection of short stories set around the theme of a generation raised without religion. Copeland ends the book with a declaration of a secret. He writes, Now here is my secret. I tell it to you with an openness of heart that I doubt I will ever achieve again. So I pray that you are in a quiet room when you hear these words. My secret is, I need God. That I am sick and can no longer make it alone. I need God to help me give because I can no longer seem to be capable of giving. To help me be kind as I no longer seem capable of kindness. To help me love as I seem beyond being able to love. It's a fabulous end to his book and it is a poignant confession of that which lies deep within him. As we start the journey through Lent uh, this evening, we are reminded that we also are to make our own poignant confessions. In the midst of all the talk of fasting and giving and praying, we are reminded that all these things occur out of a heart that willingly confesses its need for God. We hear that in our psalm. Our psalm is one that holds up some strong truths about God's love and God's forgiveness. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not hold against them. The Lord's unfailing love surrounds those who trust in him. There are some fabulous uh, verses in Psalm 32. But all those wonderful truths are realized only from a heart that acknowledges the basic need for mercy and forgiveness. And so it points us to our need, particularly in Lent, our need to bow before God in humility and humbleness. Because the fact is, like Copeland, we all need a little help, don't we? None of us have it figured out fully And all of us carry around within ourselves a sense of fallenness. And dare I say, a sense of sinfulness. That's what this night is all about. It is about the radical acknowledgement that we are frail, imperfect people. And that it is only by the gracious goodness of God that we receive the gift of eternal life. But instead of this being a dour look uh, and kind of a morbid take on theology, this is to bring about a sense of healing, a sense of deep connection with the goodness of God, a sense of closeness with him who comes to us. Because confession, confessing our need before God, isn't just disclosing a secret. It's about unburdening the soul. Our psalm says, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. There's a sense of that which weighs upon the psalmist. They describe how his sin slowly saps his spiritual strength. You know, because it's hard work trying to be perfect all the time. And it's hard work pretending that we have everything all figured out all the time. And that nothing goes wrong in our spiritual lives. The reality is that those things slowly work havoc upon our relationship with God. And yet God is here to forgive. 
And God is here to accept. Even when it says that for day and night your hand was heavy upon me, it's a call to freedom. Sometimes in church circles we talk about uh, conviction of sin as if that is about declaring how bad someone is. I'm going to convict you of your sin and declare how bad you are. Yet it's really about honoring God's call for us to be free. God's call for us to be rid of that which does spiritual damage. It's about accepting the call to be loved in the presence of Christ. The psalmist says, Then I acknowledged my sin to you. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my soul. The psalmist is free to experience the love of God. And so are we. Today, Ash Wednesday, through the imposition of ashes, through, uh, through the solemnness of the service, it's about confession. It's about the radical acknowledgement that we are in need of God. We need his love, we need his mercy, and we need his forgiveness. Our litany of penitence maps it out quite well, and we're going to get to that in a moment. We are called to confess our past unfaithfulness, our pride, our impatience, our anger, and our frustration. We confess those things because somewhere along the way, each of them has occurred in our lives, and we need to get rid of them. In this life, we need God. We need help loving We need help giving. We need help praying. We need God's forgiveness and mercy no matter who we are. There are times where we need God to create in us a clean heart. That's just part of the basic fact of who we are as fallen people. But when we acknowledge that, when we take the scary act of confessing those things, We open up ourselves to more deeply and more fully experience the love and the healing and the forgiveness of God in our lives. And that is the journey of Lent. And that is what we start this evening. Amen.